welcome back to another episode of Cascadia Kayak Angler. Today I'm out on Palmer Lake in Okanagan County, up near the Canadian border, in pursuit of smallmouth bass. Now it's the middle of the summer, so the air temps have been really hot. It's been getting up close to 100 degrees most days. And that limits the opportunities to trout fish, um, unless I make a long drive up into the mountains. But there are many lakes and rivers in our region that support smallmouth bass. And they're a hard fighting, aggressive species of bass. One of our more exciting warm water bass fisheries. Now, ooh, it's a good fish. When you first start looking into and researching these, these fish, there's just so many ways to target them. And it might be a little bit overwhelming to somebody who's new to the sport. So I'm going to go through three simple techniques that I like to use to catch smallmouth bass. And if you guys start off with these three and expand from there, you'll find a lot of success. You'll catch a lot of fish out on the water. There you go. That's what it's all about right there. That's a beauty. A nice 17, 18 inch fish. Hard fighting. Absolutely gorgeous. So the first technique I want to cover is uh, just jigging. Um, now there's lots of different types of jigs out there, um, but the, the basics are there's your basic lead head with a curly tail grub jig and then you have your tube jigs. Um, those are the two most widely available and in my opinion two of the most effective um, simple jigs you'll find. So today I'm using a tube jig by Savage Gear. This is their 3D Gobi. Now we don't necessarily have gobies in our lakes around here, but we do have sculpin, which look essentially like the same thing and can be fished in the same way. Now the most amazing thing about uh, jigs is that they can be fished in so many ways. Um, you can crawl them along the bottom like a crayfish, or in this case like a sculpin. Um, you can just retrieve them quickly, especially with your curly tail grubs. Uh, that that uh, tail will just spin and imitate a bait fish, and so you'll get a reaction strike that way. Uh, another technique I like to use is called the Pied Piper technique, and that's where you sort of lift up, let it f the jig fall back down to the bottom, and then lift up again. Oh, got a bite there. Um, and a lot of times they're going to take that bait on the fall. Now, there's a lot of different weights out there. I tend to fish anywhere from 1 16th ounce up to a quarter ounce if I'm fishing somewhere deep. But today I'm fishing in 10 to 20 feet of water, so I'm just going to use a 1 8 ounce tube jig. I like that slow fall, so don't overweight your jigs because it's just going to lead to more snagging, and that slower fall is going to lead to more strikes. Another nice fish here. Ooh, 
almost came in the boat with me. Come on. <laughs> Beautiful fish. You can see it just inhaled that jig. There you go. Simple and effective jigs. Now when handling bass, um, if this is your first time handling them, uh, you want to keep them vertical straight up and down. It's really easy to strain these jaw muscles here. And so you either want to support them that way or two points. So don't ever lift them and then let go of the belly here because it'll change the angle on that. It can be very stressful to the fish. They're a really gorgeous animal. <laughs> Give me a little shower. Now for colors, uh, for smallmouth bass, I really like anything that imitates uh, the prey species in the lake that or river that I'm fishing in. So, crayfish is a good staple one. He popped off. Crayfish is a good staple color. So any of your crayfish colors. Uh, this is sort of a brown pumpkin with purple flake, which is a pretty good crayfish imitation. Green pumpkins color is a good one. Yellow perch patterns are also really good. And if you have, if your lake or river has uh, salmon or steelhead smolts or kokanee, um, any of your silver bait fish patterns will be really effective in that fishery. There we go. Like I said, you can get really consistent accuracy. <laughs> And you'll see those same color combinations, that theme will carry it throughout the day on these other two techniques that I'm going to use. Um, I also have just a personal preference to purple colors, purples and blues for smallies seem to work for me year round. So anytime I see some purple flake or blue flake in a lure, it tends to make its way into my smallie box. Oh, it's another really nice fish here. Gorgeous. There you go. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna hang up my tube jig for a little bit and switch to a different technique. So now I'm gonna fish what's called a Senko. Now, this is a finesse style fish and that is a slow soft presentation that I find to be a very effective year round. Um, there's a lot of companies producing these Senko style stick baits. They're soft plastic. Some of them are he more heavy in salt than others. Um, but I personally just stick with the original brand. Uh, that is the Yamamoto brand of Senko. It's called Yamasenko. I just get way more action on these uh, Senkos than any other brand out there. There's a lot of different ways to 
rig these and I'm going to go through those in more detail during my shore lunch. Um, but here I have what's called a wacky rig style and that's where you use a small rubber o-ring and then you run the hook underneath it. This one has a little bit of weed guard on here because I am fishing in some vegetation. If you're fishing in open water that's not necessary. Uh, so the bait itself has quite a bit of weight because of all the salt in it. Um, the salt also makes the fish grab and hold on to it for longer. And this is just a free fall bait. When it falls it shimmies as it goes down and triggers a strike reaction. Um, yeah, you don't need to add weight unless you're fishing per particularly deep, but I find that I actually get, even fishing up to 25 foot of water, I will fish without weight. I tend to get more fish that way. Um, but with this technique, it takes a little bit of practice. You have to keep an eye on your line. Um, that is why I will use a high-vis line, um, a high-vis braid that floats when fishing these Senkos. So I'm keeping my eye on that line. If I see it twitch or do anything abnormal, like that, then I'll set the hook on it. And for both, oh, and this is a large bow. For both the, <laughs> nice fish. Um, for both the Senko fishing and for the jigging, I prefer a braid. Um, you can detect the bites a lot easier. You can watch your line, you can track your line a lot better. It transmits that information very efficiently. Yeah, and a lot of our lakes and rivers support really healthy populations of largemouth bass too. Beautiful fish in itself, much larger mouth, got that green color. Makes it look like a pickle. I could call them ditch pickles. Um, beautiful fish there too. It's always nice to get a little bonus. But yeah, Senkos are effective for both species of bass. And you can see how that wacky ring there, this wacky rig, that O-ring, it prevented the hook from tearing out of that worm. So this makes your Senkos last a lot longer. If you run them without these wacky rigs or um, if you rig them incorrectly, a lot of times you'll lose your, lose your Senko on every fish that you get or it'll get so torn up that you won't be able to fish it. So as I was saying before, I was interrupted by that fish. When fishing these Senkos, it's the fall that you typically get the strike on or just after the lures become motionless on the bottom. So you just want to let them free fall down to the bottom. Even let them wiggle a bit down into those weeds then slow lift and then pick up your slack. You want this controlled fall down. And the whole time I'm keeping an eye on that line looking for anything unusual. So either you'll feel the bite transmitted through the braid or you'll actually see your line take off uh, in one direction or another. And you want to pick up that slack really quickly and give it a strong hook set. Now, other than just the, there's a lot of ways you can fish these things because you're not necessarily just to have to do that single sort of Pied Piper technique where you're casting out letting it fall and then doing the rod lift. Another thing I'll do is I'll cast out, let it fall. When it makes contact with the bottom, just give it a short couple pops, shake it, make that worm come to life, come to action, and then I'll stop, let it sit. There we go, go fish. 
sometimes just that little they're following it down to the bottom and then they see that little bit of shimmy and they just can't resist gorgeous fish here another large mouth Nice fat fish. <laughs> it's going the wrong way. A smally on a Senko. There you go. Even those little fish will quite readily take a large five inch Senko. Another one of my favorite techniques and the final of the three I'm going to cover today is crankbaiting. It's a super effective way to get your gear down deep or shallow, but you can cover a lot of water. You watch all those hooks. baby now, crankbaits come in a variety of designs there's just an amazing variety of crankbaits out there and a lot of them will work really effectively for smallmouth. Uh, I'm just trying to have a variety in my tackle box that cover a variety of depths so if I want to fish you know deeper I'll look for big deep build crankbaits like I got this hog boss here. Um, another good deep diving one is the Lure Jensen Hot Lips. And then you're just going to look for patterns that, color patterns that match your prey base and the lakes and the rivers you're fishing. So, I mean, a good variety of things to have up here. Uh, two must haves are probably a crayfish pattern. And then if you're fishing the any of the river systems with salmon or steelhead uh, smolts, you're definitely going to want to have some sort of smolt pattern, silvery, blue, or black uh, design. And then yellow perch is a pretty abundant uh, food resource in a lot of our smallmouth lakes. So if you had a yellow perch, crawfish, and smolt, you'd be pretty set. But you can also use just 
really bright reaction colors like clown which is like a chartreuse and and red there's really no uh, no end to the variety of colors you can use and like I said I've always been partial to purple so purple is a good one to have in there too but you know crankbaiting is really simple it lets you cover a lot of water really effectively um, just cast and retrieve you can change the speed at which you retrieve to get different action some of these crankbaits are suspending crankbaits so they'll just sort of stop in their tracks when you're retrieving if you stop your retrieve others like the one I'm using now are a float and I like those for when I'm banging them off the rocks on the bottom I can stop let it float up off the rock like it's a, a fish taking a break or a stunned fish and a lot of times I can get a strike that way Okay, so I'm going to briefly cover the equipment I use uh, when jig fishing. Um, let's just start with rod and reel. You don't need anything fancy. A six and a half to seven and a half foot medium power spin cast is what I'm generally looking for. Um, you can use bait cast if you want, but I prefer spin cast. It's just easier on my shoulder when casting from the kayak all day long. Uh, on there, I'm going to put a 20 to 30 pound braid. I like a braid. Just because of the sensitivity of it, I can pick up that bite because um, I'm oftentimes they're biting on that drop, and that braid will lets me detect that bite a lot easier than I would with mono. Fluorocarbon would work too. Um, I just like the braid because it'll cut through vegetation a little bit better than uh, fluorocarbon will. On there, I'm going to run a two to four foot liter of fluorocarbon. Um, if I'm in open water, doing open water smallie stuff, there's not a lot of stuff I'm going to hang up on. Six to ten pounds is fine. If I'm in some vegetation like I was on this trip, um, I'll probably ru I'm running a little bit closer to 12 on the fluorocarbon, but I generally don't go much heavier than that. I do like the fluoro. It sinks better. Um, it does have a little more abrasion resistance and uh, less stretch, so I do get a solid hook set. As far as jigs go, there's a ton of different jigs on the market. The old school curly tail grub is still extremely effective. There's a bunch of different jig heads you can buy. Um, you know, just you can match different colors, uh, like this crayfish color here. That'll work pretty good. Um, purple, another one of my favorites for smallies. Hula grubs from uh, Yamamoto. These are great to be crawled along the bottom like a crayfish. Uh, we got some jigs come with the lead molded inside the body. This one imita imitates a bait fish. This is what's called a Ned Rig. Very simple, just half a Senko on a lightweight 
uh, 1 16th or lighter jig head. Um, today I was primarily using uh, this new product, uh, the Gobi Tube from Savage Gear that just came out the last iCast show. It's heavily salted, comes in lots of great colors, it's actually molded from a, a real fish. Um, and these tube jigs work really great. There's simpler ones out there, but I've been really happy with this one today. It produced almost all my fish uh, compared to the other techniques I was running. You just slide these Strike King tube jig heads up inside here and punch this eyelet out through the soft plastic and then you can jig it. Um, Gets it makes some really quality tube jigs too. And then there's skirted jigs. This one has a weed guard on it. And you can put um, other like uh, crawdads, plastics on here to add a trailer to it. So that's just some of the different jigs that are out there. There's lots of jigs you can use to catch smallies. Um, and I've had great success with all of them. So uh, definitely something to add to your tackle box if you're gonna be pursuing this species. Now that other method I just showed you that I caught quite a few largemouth on as well is senko fishing. And senko fishing is one of my favorite techniques for bass fishing all around. It's effective year-round. Um, it can be fished uh, in deep water, shallow water, weedy conditions and non-weedy conditions. They're basically just a, a rubber stick bait. Not much to them. Just a plastic lure. Uh, they're heavily salted, at least the ones from Yamamoto are. That makes them um, prone to tearing but does give them weight for casting. They have quite a bit of weight. Um, and these can be fished in a variety of ways. Um, as far as the the gear you're going to need to fish these, I use essentially exactly the same setup that I showed you that I used for jigging. A medium action rod in the 6.5 to 7.5 range, same thing, high vis braid. I really encourage a high vis braid on this because that line will float a little bit on the surface and you can watch the behavior of that line if it moves or jolts in a weird way that means a fish has grabbed it. Same thing, fluorocarbon leader. Um, definitely want to go fluorocarbon. You want your line to sink on this so that um, it adds to the action of your Senko. From there you're just going to tie your hook on and rig your Senko. Now there's a couple different ways to rig Senkos. I'm just going to go over those briefly. Um, one technique is called Texas rigging. And Texas rigging is a really effective way uh, when, when fishing in weedy conditions and oftentimes I'll find Smallies early season moving up into the weeds uh, looking for that warmer water in April and May and pre-spawn and I can find good numbers of fish in there but this is really the best way to get in there and access those fish in those weedy conditions. Here I'm using a trapper tackle uh, offset wide gap hook. Absolutely love these hooks. You'll go through a lot of Senkos fishing Texas rigged um, but you'll go through a lot fewer if you use the trapper tackle hook. Um, they have this unique bait lock square design here that prevents the Senko from sliding down every time you get it hung up in the weeds. It locks it in place and you get less tearing on your worm um, when you're out fishing. Also when you hook a fish, the worm slides down and away and the fish's uh, lips lock into here and it makes it harder for the fish to throw the hook. So to rig these is actually really simple. You take uh, the skinny, um, you can take either the skinny or fat end. Um, I take the long end of the worm here, there's a segment. Um, you just thread it up onto so that that first segment goes into that bait lock and then you're just going to rotate it through and slide this thing all the way up and push it up. I'll, I'll end up pushing it up the line over my knot and then you just bend this back and you get a nice le level of presentation right there. You got the gap here, so when the fish comes, it's going to push this down and it'll expose that bar that's just protected right there. And that's when you need to give it a solid hook set. But that allows you to fish this weedless. Um, it won't get hung up. You can snake that through the weeds, pop it through the weeds, and it'll fall uh, just like you want it to. Um, if I'm not fishing at wide gap or using the offset wide gap hooks, Texas rig style, then the other approach I'm using is wacky rigging. I highly recommend going to your local bait shop and getting a little wacky rig tool. It's just a little hollow pen with a series of o-rings on it and you can buy replacement o-rings at any hardware store. You slide that ring down, you slide your wacky rig, your uh, Senko up inside the wacky rig tool and then you just push that ring 
over the edge. Now that rings in place and you can put your hook. I usually use a size one to one aught hook for a small mouth. You'll just run that hook underneath that rubber ring and that'll hold it in place. You don't have to tear up your rubber. Fish can grab this. They like to grab one in and pull away with it. They're not gonna tear your uh, worm off your hook. It saves you so much money. These Senkos are not inexpensive. This is the way to do it. They also make um, weighted ones too. Like I said, I prefer to fish weightless, but sometimes windy situations or deep water situations require a little bit of lead to get down there near the bottom in the strike zone. Um, and these ones both come with weed guards just to help prevent uh, snags on weeds. So you can, if you're in open water, you don't necessarily have to have the weed guards, but it doesn't affect hookup ratios in my experience. So that's it. That's how you rig up your uh, Senko rig. All right, so you just watched me pick up a couple smallies on crankbaits, so I just wanted to go briefly over the equipment I use. Um, for rods, I prefer a little bit longer, seven to seven and a half foot long rod. Uh, if you can find fiberglass rods, I love those for crankbaiting, but they're really hard to find. Um, there's a few companies making them, but not many. Um, if not, just use a graphite rod, but look for a slow um, action rod. For the reel, it's spooled a little differently than my jigging and Senko um, reels. I don't use braid. Uh, you have a tendency to rip the hooks out of the mouth when you use braid when crankbaiting. So I use P-Line's FluoroClear, which is a copolymer coated with fluorocarbon, so I get the best of both worlds, some stretch, but also some weight and the lack of visibility to the fish. Um, I just use 12 pound um, straight through, no leader, um, and that suffices for most situations. This is a reaction strike. They're not doing a lot of inspecting on this, so it doesn't matter if you run a little bit heavier line. As far as crankbaits go, there's just an endless variety on the market. Um, I have a preference for hog bosses, which are no longer in production. Um, they're a very deep diving crankbait. We'll go up to 15 feet, but you'll see my color patterns here. A lot of crayfish, some smolt patterns, some yellow perch, um, rainbow trout. I'm just trying to match the hatch essentially in the lake. Um, there's a lot of different styles. There's jointed ones. This is a suspending crankbait so it goes down, stays um, at the depth, it doesn't float back up. Whereas this is a floating crankbait. So when I stop reeling it starts to come up whereas this stays in place. There are lipless crankbaits like this rattle trap. Um, and then there are small square bill crankbaits which only dive a few feet so if I'm fishing shallow these are the ones I'm going to want to use. Um, so yeah there's a ton of those on the market all of them are really effective they don't necessarily have to match the hatch you can have just some bright colors that uh, get a reaction from the fish but this is definitely something you want to add to your tackle box if you're going to get into smallie fishing. Um, I highly recommend getting into smallmouth fishing if you haven't tried it they're just a ton of fun and you know with diminishing returns on some of our salmon and steelhead runs it's good to diversify your tackle box so to speak so that you can get out there and still enjoy a great time on the water during the summer months and even in the fall and spring when the smallies are biting um, it's a really fun fishery um, and everybody that i know that gets got into it really enjoys it and i'm pretty sure that you will too so thanks for joining me today if you have any questions or you want to see more future videos on specific techniques on smallmouth be sure to comment um, in the comments below and let me know what you want to see thanks for joining me today and have a great time out on the water